Hi, this is Nathan Wynn from A Nomadic. Today I will be showing you how to print a long power form that across multiple pages to PDF. Currently in Canvas, if we go to print preview, you can only see what on the screen. Regardless of the scroll, the content will not expand across multiple pages. It does not matter if we choose portrait or landscape. With the PDF feature in Power Apps, we can take this long text, it could be your power app form, and generate a print preview that across multiple pages and user can download the PDF. Here is the PDF from the preview that has four pages long. We can do the same thing with the gallery. With this gallery has three and 14 record, it would take a bit longer to generate the file. That's why it's a good idea to create a loading screen so that your user is aware of the operation running and not your app being broken. After some 30 seconds, we have a preview that is about 12 pages long. If we click on this gallery employee PDF, we would have this file here that is 12 pages long. Now let's go to the Power App, look at all the control and the code behind it. You have the opportunity to buy this Power App file here, the link in the description to support me at the price of $2.99. If you wish not to purchase, you can follow along. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to enable the PDF feature. We go to Settings, Upcoming Feature, and we search for PDF, and we have to enable it. By default, your is off, you need to enable it. In my Power App, I have two screens. One is the data, this is the one. And the other one is for the print preview. The print preview, I will go over first because it has lesser control. In print preview, I have a label with the text download PDF. I will have an attachment control. I will show you how to obtain that attachment control and the code behind it. But for now, knowing that there is an attachment control in the form, the download label. Up here, I have the header. The text for the header is using from the variable var print header. And print header has a value of prepare print preview. And then I have the PDF viewer control. You can obtain the PDF viewer control by searching for PDF and that's the one. Now in the PDF viewer control, the content, the document is from variable name PDF preview and the data type is a blob. Here I have the icon home control and here this simply take me back to the S data screen. So the printing screen is fairly straightforward. In this data screen, we have three containers and of course we get the container through searching for it here. We have five other controls out here, one of which is the header. You notice that I have my screen name as part of the control naming. That way I don't have duplicates because this header may be used in some other screen that I have. I will talk about the two labels and two icons here at a later time. For now, let's look at this container long text. I have the header for it and the label text with a bunch of mumbo jumbo here. I obtained this text in Microsoft Word, you use this formula here, you specify the number of paragraphs you want and numbers of sentences you like in a paragraph. Close it, press enter, and that's simply what I did. I copy and paste over, make sure it is in double quote. The only thing I did is between paragraph, I add two line breaks. Char 10 is a line break in text control. And that's what we have here. Now, because we are displaying this label within a view, we want the height to be specified properly with everything else. So right now, we look at the height. If var variable printing on is not true, then we would like the height to be 615. At the moment, the var printing on is blank, therefore it's not true. So we have the height at 615. We will take note of this variable here. Another property within this label control needs to be looked at is the auto height. The same variable, if var printing on equal to true, then we want the auto height to be true. Meaning if we are in the printing preview mode, we would like 
this label control to expand as much as it needs to to display all the text and nothing hidden, nothing in the scroll. So right now it is not true, therefore the outer height is false. That's why it has that 615 height here. It's very important that we take note of this one. Now, if we are to click on this print icon, we would see that we set the var printing on to true because right now we would like to generate a print preview. That's what we did here. We set the var print header, prepare print preview. We set the var file name to long text. We set the printing on to true. We set the var PDF preview. This one right now, it is a block because we use the newly enabled feature PDF. We specify the PDF to get the content from this container right here. Within this container, we would like the data to expand, meaning it should be able to expand long enough to cover all the text the label has to. So the orientation, we want it to be portrait and the paper size to be A4. There are documentation within Microsoft website that you can get more for this PDF function. For now, that's all you need. After it obtained the print preview, it assigned to this variable here. And the data type for this variable is a blob. Next, we navigate to the screen printing that we have here. And I use the transition fade. After that, we turn off. We set our printing on to false. We turn off the printing mode. So let's test it right here. When we click on this, it generates the print preview. It displayed right here. And you see that var file name to long text, that's what it used. So let's look at the controls of this printing screen. 